everyone! Welcome to today's video. Today I decided I would take you guys around my laboratory following me around. We have a lot of ongoing projects in this laboratory and I'm just showing you what, I, what I'm doing on this current one. So today's a fairly easy day. It should only take me like maximum five hours to complete my task. And it's a Sunday so there's no one in lab so it gave me a little more courage to bring you bring y'all along. <laughs> so my goal for this video is to inspire other undergraduates to work in a laboratory and also in the future I plan on making another video explaining you know like how to get into a lab and how to get funded to work in a lab. I'm very fortunate that I get paid for my work here in this laboratory so I just want to share that information with, with y'all. I work in a botany and plant sciences laboratory. Even though I am a chemist, you might be wondering why the heck do you work in there? <laughs> this lab is extremely interdisciplinary which is really nice because there are projects that deal with genetics while my project deals more with like molecular function and structural analysis. I do a lot of separations, extractions, instrumental analysis and I've learned a lot of new techniques as well that I would have never learned in a chemistry lab like in a straight chemistry lab. This is actually my last week here though so I wanted to take advantage and like film the process a little bit so you guys can, can kind of see what I'm doing so I'm super sad. <laughs> it's bittersweet because I'm leaving this laboratory and I'm going into a pure chemistry lab, um, physical chemistry because that's what I want to do for grad school. My new lab is actually very similar to this lab like because we use a mass spectrometry instrument however just no plants <laughs> so I won't be working with plants anymore in the I love plants, but they are a pain sometimes, such a pain in the butt to deal with them because they're just very unpredictable. I know you're probably used to seeing me with like a full face of makeup, <laughs> but honestly I don't wear makeup every single day, especially not in the lab, and it's not because I'm like insecure that someone will judge me or anything, I just don't have time. So my PI is actually about to retire, super sad. Because of this you'll see that my laboratory is actually very sort of dated I guess, like a lot of our instruments aren't the newest, but it's totally fine, they work very well, they're very precise and accurate for our purposes. And it's been a really good experience for me to learn how to do things manually and you know learn how things were done in the past, like for example our scales have to be manually tarred as you'll see soon. So at first I was like shook, like what is this? <laughs> you mean I don't just press the button? But it's been a really good learning experience. So. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys around and um, I won't be explaining the procedure in super heavy detail because it's top secret. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I just want you guys to get a general idea of like what it's like to work in a lab. Alright, so let's get started and hopefully you like this video. Okay, so you're probably wondering what the heck is liquid nitrogen, and I just wanted to show you. Uh, I don't know if you could see, but it's literally liquefied nitrogen. Nitrogen is normally a gas. Let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, so it's freezing cold. Um, as long as my hands aren't wet, it's totally safe. It can freeze like a banana and I can drop it on the floor and it'll completely shatter. So we use this to freeze our tissue and then cr crunch it up as you'll see soon. This is the funnest part of my job. So these are the cute little plants that I'll be harvesting today. They are 13 day old tobacco plants. Um, I'm going to be counting them one by one. <laughs> it's going to be really painful. And I will weigh out 5 grams of them. So there's one and there's my other batch. One pot down, who knows how many more to go. Okay. So this is where we keep all of our uh, reagents and these are our scales. So as you can see, they're very vintage-y. I'm going to be using this one today. So it's been a little over two hours and I just finished harvesting this whole tray here. Normally it doesn't take me this long, normally it takes me like one hour to harvest, uh, but the reason that today's taking so long is because I don't know if you can see, but I have had to count each individual plant that I pull out <laughs> one by one. Honestly, it's been really treacherous, but that's what we have to do. So um, yeah, and then I'm aiming for five grams, and right now I'm like at three grams, so I still have like an hour to go. 
help. So this is my least favorite part, obviously. It's my back hurts, I'm dying, I'm sleepy. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep going at it and I'll see you guys soon. So I got the amount that I needed and I'm going to start the separation. Okay, so I have my five grams approximately of plant tissue harvested. I have this mortar and pestle that I'm going to use to grind up the frozen tissue powder. Uh, here's my liquid nitrogen, and I'm going to use this to scoop the liquid nitrogen. I have a bunch of spatulas. I have, um, 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 um oh yes, so my little... These are centrifuge tubes, they're very high strength, so this is where I'll put my sample when I'm done grinding. I have this um, ah, this solvent here. It's a 1 to 1 ratio of methanol and chloroform, and I have it closed off using, oh my gosh, I can't think right now, what is this called? OMG, 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 I can't think right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like a waxy seal. Um, why can't I think right now? Anyways, I have my internal standard that I'll eventually add, and I have my pipette man so I can dispense that, and uh, 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 uh. yeah, so we're ready to go. There's a little bit of dirt in here, so I'm just gonna leave that in there. Oh, this is called parafilm. Wow, I really couldn't think of it. I'm gonna go put the sample on a stirring plate in the cold room, and I'm going to let it stir for about 30 minutes. So there's a little stir bar in there, I don't know if you could see it, but uh, basically through magnetic forces it spins my sample, so it's gonna be like mixing it. Okay, so we're going into the cold room right now. It's super cold in here. And this is the little setup I have going on, so I'm just gonna dismantle it now. Okay, so I need to centrifuge my sample now. First, I need to remove the magnetic spin bar. So I'm using this little magnet thing to remove the spin bar. smell the chloroform. Okay, so I want to centrifuge this now, so I'm just going to go weigh this and then get the same amount and weight of water into this empty vial here. So this is our centrifuge. Very old school. And that's what it looks like inside, so I'm just going to load it right now. So we want this at 2500 RPM for 5 minutes, that's good, that's good. Let's close this thing up. And I'm just going to start it. It's accelerating. So while my sample is in the centrifuge, I'm just going to set up my little filtration contraption. So here I have some pH 2 acidic water. Okay, so the centrifuge is done. Yeah, so my pellet is separated from the liquid supernatant, and I'm just going to pour this out right now. So this is waste. I'm going to leave it in the fume hood so it'll evaporate. Looks like a shot of green juice. Okay, so now I'm going to filter it through my little filter device here.
That should be good, so I'm gonna turn off the vacuum. Alright, so now I'm just gonna pour this into a 50 ml centrifuge tube. I don't really need a funnel for this because the lip of my Erlenmeyer is really thick, so it's kind of like a slide for my liquid. Okay. And now I'm going to add my acid. That's what that looks like. So now I'm going to seal it tight and mix it. Okay, so I'm setting up the... I'm setting up the road map right now. So basically it's a machine that we use to dry our samples. So I just finished centrifuging my sample and this is what it looks like after the acid addition. So now I'm just going to take the lower layer using a pipette and put it into my round bottom flask. So this is the rotovab. So this is my sample right now. Um, I need to go centrifuge this again. This is basically just a methane hexane mixture with my uh, with my synthetic elicitors in them. So I'm gonna go centrifuge this right now. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys a really cool little science experiment. I have some leftover uh, liquid nitrogen with me. So I'm just gonna take my glove here and I'm gonna fill it up with water. So the glove is full of water. And I'm just going to dip it into the liquid nitrogen bath, and we'll see what happens. I love it! So we're finally done. <laughs> it's um, let's see. So I got to lab at well, I got to school at ten to pick up the plants. Um, yeah, I got here at ten. I'm sorry, I'm so tired. Can you tell? <laughs> I got to school at ten to pick up the plants, and then it's six fifty right now. I just got done, so I've been here for how long is that? Um, oh, it's just eight hours. <laughs> I'm like dead right now, so I think I'm just really tired because I only expected it to be like four to five hours, but then the harvesting process took like three and a half hours, which was ridiculous, and then I made a mistake at some point, which set me back a little bit, and yeah, so, but I mean, we're done. <laughs> this is definitely how research is, like it's very unpredictable, and you never know how long an experiment might truly take, or whether something might not work entirely, so... In this video though, I didn't show you like everything, so there was a lot of dishwashing going on in between, a lot of preparation going on in between that I didn't want to film because I don't think you want to sit through 8 hours 
of lab work. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed getting some insight as to what it's like to work in a laboratory. I was completely alone today. Every lab is different, so like my lab doesn't have graduate students. So um, basically the undergraduates are like mini, mini grad students, <laughs> which is a good experience for myself. Um, my PI is actually in Illinois right now, so I was doing everything by myself today. Um, which I usually do, but I usually have him available in his office in case I have any questions, so I can just like ask him any questions. But that wasn't the case today, so when I made my little mistake, I was like texting him fr frantically, like, what do I do? Because uh, I thought I'd just like ruin the whole sample. Yeah, <laughs> but everything's okay. Uh, the sample's not ruined. Um, okay, so tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to film tomorrow because my PI will be here. And it's just kind of awkward but basically all I'm doing tomorrow is instrumental analysis so I'm running my sample through the gas chromatography flame ionization dissociation um, also known as GCFID <laughs> and then after that we're going to do gas chromatography mass spectrometry aka GCMS after that I'm going to analyze the data I'm doing another sample tomorrow so I'm, I'm doing the same thing I did today tomorrow but on top of that I'm doing the instrumental analysis so yeah all this word jumble is just like hopefully not overwhelming and hopefully this inspires some people to want to work in a laboratory if you have any questions just leave them in the comments for me and uh, hopefully soon i'll make a video about how to actually get into a lab and how you can get paid to work in a lab because we all need money don't we <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye